Welcome back to some more Retro Rampage. Now I know what most of you are thinking. Is that all Jonathan does whenever he's not riding roller coasters is sit around and play video games that are older than he is? And the answer to that is yes, but today I wanted to try something different. Pinball. A classic American pastime and a staple in arcades for generations. Now pinball video games were abundant, especially in the 90s. Like Sonic Spinball, which is a really fun game but in no way represents what an actual pinball table is like. Besides, Pinball video games are all over the place now, but I'm talking about the real thing. No, not a virtual table or those little tiny ones you see in magazines sometimes. No, I'm talking about original, full-blown, arcade pinball. The problem with that, though, is that those pinball tables are absolutely huge, and as far as the game room here goes, I don't have that kind of room in here. So, as much as I love Sonic Spinball, I'm gonna have to relocate. Fortunately, Spinball can come along, thanks to the Nomad. Anyway, let's go. All right, this is more like it. Now we got a few tables to go through here, and all of them are unique. That's one of the most amazing things about pinball. So let's kick things off with Space Odyssey, released by Williams in 1976. This table has nothing to do with the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, although it does have some awesome art on the back glass. I do want to mention that there's also a four-player version of this table called Space Mission, but Odyssey here is only two players. This is an electromechanical table, meaning that there aren't really any electronic components, just bells and whistles, as well as rotating numbers for the scoreboard. That doesn't mean it's not fun, though. What's unique about this table is the aptly named swinging target in the center. It can be a challenge to hit, but each hit will advance the bonus you get when the ball drains. There are also two kickout holes next to each flipper. If you time it right, you can get the ball locked into a short pattern, going in a V-shape between the kickouts and the swinging target. I know it's not unique to this table, but Space Odyssey also has a spinner, which are always fun to hit. When the light under it is lit, each spin is worth 1,000 points. There's also this rounded tunnel here that can further advance the bonus, and the pinball staple pop bumpers right in the middle. This table is simple, but thanks to the swinging target, it can be a ton of fun. I could easily play this for hours at a time, but we've got some more tables to look at, so let's move on. Next up is Freedom by Bally, also released in 1976. If you couldn't tell already, this was made to commemorate the United States Bicentennial, and they really went all out with the American theme. Red, white, and blue all over, and you know what, it looks great. Four players this time too. So what we have here is a wheel at the center that the arrow will spin around as you play. Whatever the arrow is on when the ball drains determines your bonus. Now I mentioned that I like spinners. Well, this table's got two of them, which is fine by me. Just like Space Odyssey, each spin is worth 1,000 when the light is on. There are also these drop targets on the left side of the table. Hit them all for a huge point bonus. At the top we've got one kick out hole, which does make the top feel kind of empty, but the pop bumpers underneath fix that pretty quickly. At the center of the wheel is a rollover target, which will advance the arrow four spaces. Rollover targets weren't very common at this point, so this is interesting to see. Now I also want to mention that although this is an electromechanical machine, Bally also produced a solid state version with electronic scoreboards, making this one of the few tables to be manufactured with both as an option. A really fun table, although I do still prefer Space Odyssey. So let's see what's next. Another Bally machine, Mystic, was manufactured in 1980, our first solid state machine, meaning we've got electronic scoreboards and music while you play. This table has a magician theme, and I really like the artwork on display here. The eye on the translate here is actually recessed, giving it a three-dimensional look. So, how do you play Mystic? You play tic-tac-toe. No, I'm not kidding. Every drop target you hit in Mystic will light up a different square on the tic-tac-toe board. Match three in a row for a huge bonus. There's also a captive ball that you can hit into a target for another point bonus. There's a lot to keep an eye on with this table, and it can get a bit overwhelming. Not helping things is the fact that the longer you play, the music will get higher in pitch. This table is not a good fit for those with high anxiety, but the tic-tac-toe element is definitely unique and can result in some ridiculous point bonuses. Next we have Evil Knievel, made by Bally in 1977. Sadly, this one isn't working right now, but I can at least show you how it's played. Your goal on this table is to light up the letters that spell out super. You do this by hitting targets when the letter you need is highlighted with the arrows. It's easier said than done though, as nearly everything you do on this table will change what the arrow is highlighting. Aside from that, the layout looks pretty standard. You've got drop targets and regular targets, and pop bumpers in the center. This one looks like it could be a lot of fun, so hopefully it gets working soon. Now it's time for the final machine I have to show you today. 
Rocky and Bullwinkle, made by Data East in 1993. This was at the time when dot matrix displays were all the rage. So in addition to special graphics on the screen here, there's actual music and voices while playing. This machine has actually been modified with a color dot matrix. The table here has a lot going on, and it has one of my favorite things, ramps. Such a simple idea, but one I never get tired of. If you're a fan of the show, then you'll be pleased to see that pretty much all of the characters are here, including Nell tied to a log. This effect is notorious for breaking as she moves closer to the saw. There's also the hat trick, where Bullwinkle tries to pull a rabbit out of his hat. This is always great to activate as the effect goes up to the back glass. And now, rocking, but that trick never works! <laughs> With its ramps, pop bumpers, skill shot lanes, and so many ways to advance the bonus I lost count, this is a table I could play for hours and it's why pinball tables from the 90s are my absolute favorites. Those are all the tables I have to show you today, but I'd love to look at more in the future. Pinball tables were produced for decades, so there's hundreds of them and there's really no end to their variety. But, now that I'm back in the game room, it's gonna be a while before I can get to play pinball again. Guess Sonic's pinball came in handy after all. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Retro Rampage. Take care, guys.